Center, please help me welcome Pastor Joe Tedman. Come on, let's welcome him. Hallelujah. Can we give our pastor a hand clap of praise? Come on. Pastor Carol, can we bless God for both of them? Thank you. Bless God for each other. Can we do that? Clap our hands for each other. And last but not least, I want us to clap our hands for the university. I mean, the church started this university. We want to thank God, the faculty, the students, the president. Come on, y'all do better than that. Come on, you produced it. Hallelujah, thank you so much for what you do. I want to read while you're already standing out of the book of Matthew. I believe chapter five. Uh, the NIV version. Our bishop has been <clears throat> on an amazing series. And uh, we want to close this series with a text that I believe you know, God gave me at the top of the week that I've kind of been just meditating on. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. When you got it, shout hallelujah. Let's read it together. Ready, read. Or the light of the world. All right, let's start over again, but read it with power. Ready, read. You are the light of the world. Let's go back to verse 14, just the A clause, and let's read that with power one more time. Ready, read. You are the light of the world. Now, I want you to look at somebody and tell them, you are the light of the world. I want you to be seated. I want you to be seated. Be seated. Be seated. We all know this scripture. This scripture is something we all learned in Sunday school. If you were brought up in church, you learned it in Sunday school. If you weren't brought up in church, you heard people say it. You are the light of the world. And so I meditated on that scripture at the top of the week because I've never taught it. I've never built a lesson from it. It's just something I just housed to know. However, as I start thinking about it and thinking about the series about I am because he is, I started thinking about this particular text. And I started thinking about the moon. Because the moon is God's creation that he set in the universe. But it doesn't make its own light. The moonlight that we actually see is a reflection from the sun. Half of the moon is revealed, one side is the day, one side is the night. But yet the only way the light that we see in the night is simply because of the reflection of the sun. Despite the fact that it sometimes seems very bright at night, very shiny and it reflects so brightly sometimes, it's still only reflecting three to 12% of the sun's rays. This perceived brightness of the moon from the earth simply depends on where the moon is in the rotation. 
So whatever it is will depend on the vantage point that you see. So whether it's a crescent moon, a half moon, or a full moon, will it all be dependent upon how it's moving and where you are standing when it's moving. It's quite interesting to me as we continue to look at it because it looks like it's changing, but in fact it's not. Our vantage point is changing. Is the moon important? Absolutely. But what we see is merely a reflection of the sun. And in our text today, what we see is not the S-U-N, but we see the S-O-N having conversations with mere small moons. Everyone that's in attendance that is listening to the sun talk, he is talking to moons who do not have their own light, but they are yet a reflection of the light of God. And so my topic today that I want to talk to you about is called reflections. I want to talk to you about reflections because what I want you to understand is that it doesn't matter where you are in life, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're up or whether you're down, whether you're happy or whether you're sad, whether you're the shape that you want to be or whether you aren't the shape that you want to be, there is not a specific time that you're supposed to shine. You can't say, when I get there, I'm shining. No, 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 no. The truth is, you're shining whether you think you are not. You're shining in every area in your life. And as soon as you wake up to the fact that it has nothing to do with you, but it's your vantage point as to how things are turning in your life, once you wake up, you'll realize, I'm always shining. I'm not just shining because of the amount of money I make. I'm not just shining because of the spouse that I'm married. I'm not just shining because I'm not just shining because, the, because of the kind of career that I've exploded into. With no money, you're shining. With no job, you're shining. Even if you feel what some may call you ugly, you're still shining. I wish I had a witness in here right now. So you've got to learn how to embrace, wait a minute, my shine has nothing to do with me. Even though I got it going on, the only reason I have it going on is because he gave me the power to create wealth. And so since he gave me the power, the power came from him. So the reason I'm shining is because of the light that has come from God that is shining upon my life. So this is why I want you to look at that person that's sitting to the left of you or to the right of you now and tell them you're shining, you're shining, you're shining, you're shining. Tell them you're shining, you're shining, you're shining. I saw you before you got here. That's how bright you were shining. I saw you in your house. That's how bright you were shining. I saw you coming down the interstate. That's how bright you were shining. Now they may not want to hear it, but you want to get them used to understanding that it's not about you being in a particular place. It's about a knowing. That I'm shining even if you don't think I am. I'm shining. But more importantly, Jesus says something. He says, you are the light of the world. And I think we go over that. That's why I don't never really teach it because it's just something you kind of hear vernacular that you hear in church. You're the light of the world. But we get so busy trying to be the light of the church that we don't recognize how big being the light of the world is. If you're just trying to be the light of the church, that's just a small microcosm of the kind of power that God has put on you and he's probably wasting it because you're limiting it to a small facility. Tell somebody you're the light of the world. The world should see God when they see you. The world should see a person that has survived one of the worst seasons of their life when they see you. The world should see an overcomer when they see you. Tell somebody, I am the light of the world. 
I don't think you even heard your own self. Not your neighborhood, not your family, not your job. Once you find out that you're the light of the world, then you don't need her to make you feel like you're the light. You don't need him to make you feel like you're the light. You can tell her or him, I was the light before I met you. I was shining before I met you. I'm gonna be shining when I leave you. You don't bring my shine. I was shining when I came in here. High five somebody, tell them I'm the light of the world. I'm the light. I'm trying to get you to understand who you are. Don't let nobody push you down. Don't let nobody try to try to take your stuff. You are. I'm gonna ask you one more time. You are. That's, 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 that's who you are. And if you're thinking anything less than that, you are belittling yourself. The light of the world. So when you go home tonight, you're going home the light of the world. When you wake up in the morning, you're waking up the light of the world. Even if it's storming outside, even if it's a hurricane outside, you still are the light of the world. If they fire you, you're the light of the world. It doesn't matter what happens to me. What happens to me doesn't make me. He made me and I am I hope y'all getting it by now. Tell somebody, that's what I am. That's what I am. That's what I am. I am the light of the world. And so God's like, I want you to go teach that to them. I want you to go talk to them about the light of the world because what they got to understand is they are a reflection. And so I said, so are we the light of the world? It's like, really? They're the light of God for the world. So my responsibility is to be who he called me in a world that he loved so much that he gave his own self for. Who sometimes the church has, has just crushed so bad that we can't even grab the world because we dog the world. But in essence, Jesus says, I came because I love the world so you got to see how much he loves it he loves it so much that before he leaves he makes sure that he leaves many lights in the world he says if I just leave it to myself then I can only light up one area but just in case if I go ahead and die and I go ahead and give my life for the world and I go ahead and tell you that you can take my life and put it in your life then you can change every place that you go and then the light of the world is everywhere it's in Florida it's in Texas it's in New Mexico it's in New York because we're not just the light of Jerusalem we're the light of the world you are bigger than what you've been thinking you are larger than what you've been thinking your mindset has to change that means you're a world changer that means your company is serving the world that means you're getting ready to open up something that's not just going to change your neighborhood and your family it's going to change the world you've been thinking too small but i came here today to expand your capacity because you're getting ready to rewrite your vision and this time you're not just writing it for you and your mother you're writing it for the world. I wish I had a witness in here. Tell somebody I am the light. The light of the world. If that's the case, and that is the case, then I had to look at the first point, which is you being a reflection of the light. Reflection simply means the throwing back by a body or surface of light. An easier way of describing an action of reflection is just simply mirroring. And the question you have to ask yourself today is what am I a reflection of? You are really the light of God in this world, but are you really reflecting God everywhere that you are? Or are you a reflection of your pain? Are you a reflection of injustice? 
Are you a reflection of who hurt you? Have you learned how to overcome trauma or work through trauma, work through crisis to where people can still see Christ in your crisis? Have you gotten to that point yet? And if you haven't, that's okay. That's why we have pastors and counselors to help us maneuver our way through tough circumstances and tough situations. But one of the greatest things you can do is overcome. It's once you learn how to overcome and people see how powerful you are, they will understand why they should join you in being the light of the world. So I have to be careful of what am I actually reflecting. Now, what I think is interesting is in John 9 and 5, Jesus says that while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So it is our obligation to keep him in the world by reflecting him why we are in this world. Now, what I think is interesting, Bishop, is that he says to the disciples, you are the light. But he hadn't taught them anything yet. They hadn't gone to seminary school. They were not rabbis. He called them the light of the world before he started training them. He didn't wait till three years to tell them, all right, I have showed you everything. Now, you are the light of the world. He told them on the front side. And I said, God, why will you do that? He said, if I tell you who you are on the front side, you don't need nobody else to try to tell you or spend the rest of your life trying to fight for who you think you are. So I'm going to tell you who you are, even though you don't look like who you are, even though you may feel like you're so far away from who you are, I've got enough grace and patience to pull you through everything that does not look like what I said you are. So I'm going to tell you, you're the light of the world. So I want you to understand, you may not feel like you're the light of the world, you may not look like you're the light of the world, but Jesus told me to tell you, yeah baby, you are the light of the world. Even though you don't feel like it, don't smell like it, you are the light of the world. I want everybody to say it, I am the light of the world. So he tells them this on the front side, which teaches us how to build a confession, to speak those things that are not as though they already are. So I've got to learn how to say what I am even though I don't look like it, even though I don't feel like it, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the offspring of God. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the borrower. And I don't care if you bought a million dollars and don't have the money to pay it back, you are still, you gotta get in practice because it's not your personal light. It is the light of God. That is reflecting. And the only reason why you don't feel like that is because of where you are in the rotation around the sun. So often our lives will drift from the sun. And when we drift from the sun, we feel like we're too far away from him to feel. But what you don't understand is God did not light you for you. Now, it's good for you to know that you're the light of the world, so it can change your perception. But he did not light you for you. The text says that you are a city on a hill that cannot be hid. That would simply mean that he lit you so that those that are in darkness have an opportunity to see what light looks like. If, if, if you've ever been traveling, and I know all of us have, we've been traveling down a road that's dark, and then when we see light, we know we've hit a city. That city means there's an opportunity for rest. There's an opportunity for economy. There's an opportunity for recovery. There's an opportunity for business. And that's what you are to darkness. So that's why darkness tries to destroy you because you represent an opportunity. You represent an opportunity when you show up in a place where people have never had what they needed, but then you pop up. You are the light of the world to that community. When you show up in a school building and people are saying, I can't believe you got your degree. You are 
the light of the world. When you show up in a place where people like you have never popped up and become multimillionaires, you are showing them, I'm the light of the world. You are a representation of economy, rest, recovery, chance, but you've got to stick with it and recognize that God is trying to illuminate through you and he's using you as a moon to give an opportunity for somebody who is saying, it's over for me. He did not light you for you. Or light would need to be lit because it would be contained within itself. But it's not just for you. You are a reflection of his light. Now what is also critical about that text is because if you know anything about his history, the Jews would name esteemed rabbis light of the world. So when someone showed up talking about you are the light of the world, and I went to school to be the light of the world, that was a slap in the face. You've been fishing, how are you the light of the world? You just got a couple of boats, how are you the light of the world? I'm Nicodemus, I'm known all over the land. I worked to be the light of the world. And I thought about it. That's what God's getting ready to do for some of you. You didn't go to school, but you're still the light of the world. You don't have the degrees that everybody have, but you're still the light of the world. You didn't come up the way everybody came up, but you're still the light of the world. Some of you like me had such a bad past, went to jail, whatever, but you're still the light of the world. God's not looking at your past like men do. God said, I know your future, and I'm trying to tell you, no matter what it looks like, you're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. But let me tell you what light does. It highlights you so well that the people that don't want you to be lit now have an opportunity to watch you. So now your life is clearly visible. So not only do you become hope for some people, you also become a target. And so you have to understand that more means more. You don't just get more of God and don't get more hatred. You don't just get more blessings and don't get more burdens. More means more. When you got many people saying, oh man, I just love you, there's a whole lot of other people saying, I can't stand you. I don't know what you're talking about. You false, you evil, you ain't nobody. You ain't no better than me. You suck, I can't stand you. I hope you die. That's what's going on at the same time while people are saying, you're so amazing. You're so incredible. You're so awesome. So you gotta learn how to be stable when you are the light of the world. That's why you can't go crazy over the praises of men because people will praise you and try to kill you right after they get through praising you. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are not the light of man. You are the light of God for the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are y'all getting anything out of this? So I'm a reflection. I am a reflection. I started thinking about it. I started thinking about it. I hear that right there. Somebody caught it. See? Historically, they had the light of the world. But you, God called you. He didn't check your background. He didn't tell you you didn't come from the right, you didn't come from the right pedigree. He said, you know what? I'm giving you a chance to be the light of the world. And it doesn't matter what you did. Doesn't matter what kind of grades you made. Doesn't matter how much money you make. That doesn't matter. You are the light of the world. And as soon as you get it, you will understand that you are a reflection of him and not a reflection of your results. Results are great. Results make us known. I get it 100%. But my faith are not in the results. My faith are in God who brings the results. That's why I am the light. So I'm a reflection of the light. Second point. Second point. Write this down. The resistance of the dark. 
darkness, we all, I don't, I don't want to say it like this because it's kind of counter scriptural. We have wrestled with the dark. Let me say it that way. I don't want to say we all have a, have a dark side, but what I want to say, we got access to it. Let me say it that way. Many of us have access to the dark side. And when I say the dark side, I'm not talking about you calling Junebug and telling Junebug to handle it for you. I'm talking about you having to check yourself because you can handle it if you want to yourself. Like you still know how to shoot. You still know how to cuss. You still know how to fight. You haven't let, you, you, you just put it down, but you know how, you know what to do. And so you, you still have access to the dark side. And every now and then, instead of doing this, you just kind of want to reel them in. <laughs> I'm tired of you, you know? You kind of want to reel them in. And we all have access to the dark side. And you have to learn how to be settled with being the light of the world when people are trying to attack you. All right? You've got to learn how to do that because darkness is going to do what? Trying to influence you from being the light. All darkness is trying to do is to get you caught up one time to destroy your future, to destroy your destiny. So darkness will do like the Bible when the Bible says that Satan dresses up like an angel of light. So the angel of light, which is an imposter of light, will try to come in and pull you from being the light of the world. Now notice, he is not the light of the world. You are. So he has to masquerade as what you already are. So every time you withdraw, you're coming down to what the devil is doing. You're not stepping up to what he's doing. He can't be what you are. You are the light of the world. He's pretending to be the light. He's trying to act like the light, but you already are the light. So you've got to be careful and resist him. So what does the Bible say? Submit unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. So resisting doesn't work without submission. Resisting doesn't work without submission. So I submit to God. God teaches me how to resist him. And it is in my resisting that I maintain the reflection of the light. Because many of us are flirting with the darkness. And because you know you are the light of the world, you feel like you've got enough power to control dark moments. I'm talking good. You ain't got to say nothing. That's like my know I'm talking good. Yeah, so you, you're not addicted to drugs, so you can smoke it every now and then. You're not addicted to pornography, so you can watch it every now and then. You got a couple of girlfriends, and they all know about each other, so you just kind of talk to them every now and then. Till one of them get pregnant. Till you get addicted to the drug that you were not addicted to. Till you get addicted to the pornography that you were just watching. See, what happens is that while you're the light of the world, God doesn't take his gift from you. So you can be in a full-fledged affair and still anointed. You can still say, you can still bring people because God's not like us. He's like, yo, I got grace. I'm hoping you're going to let that thing go. I'm hoping you're going to recognize that you're the light of the world and not sabotage your life with that dark side. So God, he just, he allow you to do it. And he watches you. And then for some of us, look at I said us. For some of us, I'm tired of you. So he'll pull back the covers on you. And you'll fall to what you should have been resisting. But what's interesting, you're still powerful. You're still the light of the world. The only difference is people don't believe in you anymore. 
The people that heard you don't believe in you anymore. The people that used to really love you don't love you anymore. Because they watched you fall. Now that's interesting. Because I, I really want to. Can I, can, I, can I park there for one second? That's interesting. Because you would think that if you're the light of the world. And you didn't make yourself the light of the world. That you would have enough grace for me if I fell because of something that I was flirting with. But for some reason, the church has not done a great job with restoring those who couldn't resist the dark side. It is my prayer that those of you that are in Florida, you're saying, I'm not going to be that way because it could be me. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not a person that's walking around that has produced my own light. The only people that produce their own light are people that will act like they've never fallen to something that they've sabotaged themselves to. But if you know the only reason why you have what you have is because of the grace of God, then you're going to have grace to give your brother, grace to give your sister, and with love and kindness, you're going to keep reeling them in because that's what people of the light do. People of the dark kill each other. Job said that people in the darkness like to hide. So evildoers like to hide in the darkness. But what I want you to know is you've got too much anointing to let the dark side rule. you got too much power to keep dating the dark side. You got too much anointing to keep taking the dark side out. And God's been walking with you through the whole process. But God's told me to tell you this morning that you can divorce the dark side. You can tell the dark side it's time for you to go. You can tell the dark side, get your underwear and get out of my house. You can tell the dark side, get your curlers and your curling iron and get out of my house. You can tell the dark side, take your drugs and go home. You can tell the dark side, you've got to get away from me because I am the light of the world. And when I deal with you, you only remind me of the dark. Some of you now, you are wrestling with this message as I teach it to you. Because you brought the dark side in here with you. You're going home to the dark side. You're taking the dark side out to eat. you double dating with the dark side's companions. And you want to know why you don't have enough power to cast it out? You're outnumbered. Everybody around you don't come from the stock that you come from. You got too much power to be in that circle. You got too much future to be in that circle. And God called me here today to tell you, come out of that circle. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 55, 65, and you're saying, I've been in it all my life. You can start over right now. You can give God your life today. You can recreate. You can become a new creature. And God can take you into a whole, a whole other dimension. Why? Because you are light. Well, Joel, how does that go with the series? I'm going to tell you how it goes with the series. Because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I said, what? Well, if Jesus said he's the light of the world, then I can say I'm the light of the world. Jesus says he's the light of the world. Now, here's what gets me about him saying he's the light of the world. When I search the context of the scripture, just give me a few minutes. Jesus says this after the woman was caught in adultery. What does you being the light of the world got to do with her being caught in adultery? Then I thought about it. Everybody that was around her was in darkness. They was just covered up in church clothes. And they all picked up their rocks. And they all got ready to judge her. And they, got all, they all got ready to throw something at her. And then the light of the world came in and just took a knee. Because the light of the world has a different approach. The light of the world came in and started writing on the ground. So I'm wondering what he lit up while he was writing. 
I'm wondering what kind of shine came in the midst of her darkness. That while he was writing, he started writing and people start dropping rocks one by one. That's what the Bible says. He says, let him without sin cast the first stone, which would mean let him without darkness keep on talking. And the Bible says that as he looked up, he looked at the woman and says, woman, where are your accusers? And the woman said, I, 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 I don't know. He said, well, I don't accuse you of nothing. Wait a minute. Jesus said, I don't accuse you of nothing either. I didn't come to condemn you. I came to save you. And then when Jesus stands up, he says, now go on. Live your life. Don't sin no more. Because when light comes, light comes to show darkness how dark you really are. I don't have to cuss you out. All I got to do is just be the light. I don't have to fuss you out. All I got to do is just be the light. I don't have to go off. All I got to do is just be the light. Look at somebody and tell them, just be the light. Oh, hallelujah. Just be the light. When he makes that statement, he makes the statement. Then the scribes that didn't walk away got mad. How you gonna say something like that? That's what they said. Where's your witness? Because those people are all about making sure you got somebody to back up what you say. So Jesus said, well, first of all, I don't need no witness. It's in your Bible, look at it. He said, I don't need a witness. But for you, I do have a witness. A witness that you don't know because if you knew, you'd know me. Because when you see me, you see the Father. And the father was his witness. That's why you have to be the light. Because when you're the light, all you're telling them is that when you see me, you see my witness. I wish I had a witness here. I don't have to say nothing. All I got to do is stand and be who God called me to be. Because when you see me, the last thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to let it go. The Lord told me, he said, the truth of the matter is, this whole text has nothing to do with the light. The truth is, what is your responsibility to the world? I didn't light you to be the best singer in the church. I didn't light you to be the biggest giver in the church. I didn't like you to be the, the greatest orator in the church. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't give you everything you have so you could be the best in the building. What is your responsibility to the world? Now that I've given you your gift, what does the world say about it? What is the world saying about you right now? Is the world only saying they don't fool with us? They don't wanna to talk to me because I drink. They don't want to come over here because of how I look. They don't want to take me out because my dress is too short. What is the world saying about you? What is the world saying about you? That you judgmental. That you don't want to, you don't want to show up where they are because of how it's going to make you look. And you're the light of the world? Why is God going to light you to be the world when you're going to talk about who he sent you to light? What is your responsibility to the world? I didn't like you so you could go on revival and just preach to church people. What is your responsibility to the world? Ah, what are you saying, Pastor Tubman? I'm telling you that you are more important than the angels in this world. Angels don't live here. They're messengers. They go back and forth. To tell what God has said, you live here. And he made you a light to this world. And so he's telling you, I've entrusted you with me, with my mission. And I'm trying to get you to activate in a world where all your church friends are telling you not to go. How come the drug dealer don't know who you are? How come the clubs don't know who you are? Because you're afraid to go in there because of what the missionary going to say. Because of what the preacher going to say. If you don't snatch them out, ain't nobody going to snatch them out. What does the world have to say about you? 
We're so worried about what we look like. So I know y'all feel like I'm fussing, but I am. You're so worried about it. You're so worried about it. You're so cute. You're so pretty. You're so fine. But don't nobody know you but the church. Satan don't even know you. His demons don't even know you. What kind of responsibility do you have to the world? Who have you gone into the world and snatched out? Is there anybody? Has anybody said, you changed my life? Or just your church friends? Have you ever stopped and witnessed to anybody? Have you won anybody to Christ in 2023? Or are you just coming to church with your sister? You're just coming to church with your brother? Who have you brought to the kingdom of God? Who can we look at and say, if it hadn't been for her, I would have lost my mind. But she came in and drug me out. What is your responsibility to the world? And how dare you be delivered from the world and not go back to the place where God got you out of? You're too good now. You're too fine now. You got too much money now. You won't even come over and see us. You won't even bring us a piece of bread. You won't do nothing. Every time we see you, you got to sell us something. You won't give us nothing. What's your responsibility to the world? If you're not going to do anything, why be the light? Why be the light? If the only people you're going to connect with are those that already said yes. I got a call to action to you today. Go find them. Change their life. Don't just be satisfied by coming here and being the light of the women's group and the light of the prayer group and the light of the men's ministry and the light of whatever ministry let the world see you so when they see you coming hell starts shaking because they know when you come and you get ready to snatch somebody out they know that person right there I'm gonna have to have double time with the demons because they not gonna stop their prayer life is relentless their snatch is relentless they're not going to stop and I'm, I'm done with it but is there anybody in your life it's probably your grandparents that had that kind of resilient mindset they wouldn't give up on you they kept on praying. They get up in the car and they drive and find you. When are you going to do that? And we keep talking about the generation, this next generation, this next generation, this next generation. What are you doing to change the next generation? They said, well, Pastor Tillman, you never preached like this when you came. If every message make you feel good, it's you're at the wrong church. <laughs> My job today is to tell you that being the light of the world comes with responsibility. And coming here and giving God a shout and a voice of praise, a cry out because they sung your favorite song, that's not enough. You're the light of the world. Amen. And he made you that for a reason. Amen. You walk out of this place today, I'm going to ask Bishop, and I'm coming back, and I want to find out who changed somebody's life. Amen. Who started on somebody's life. Amen. Some people, it's not going to take long. Somebody's just going to take a conversation. But there may be somebody you're going to have to pull on a journey and take them and pour back into them. If it's not you pouring into them, it's you connecting them with somebody else and you're really pushing the buttons through the person. Who life are you changing? It's not just about shining. Shining is a part of it. But it's about your responsibility. Especially on your feet, we're getting ready to go. Stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. The Bible says that you were this city set on the hill, right? And when I started reading that Bible, Bishop, so many good things happened on the hill. Mount Ararat, 
is where Moses is where Noah landed when it flooded. Mount Sinai, we know what that's for, the mountain of God. Mount Moriah is the place where Abraham was getting ready to sacrifice his son. God provided for him. Golgotha, Mount Calvary, so much happened on the mountain. And yet God is telling you that you're a city on the hill and not a sacrifice on the hill. You are a city on the hill that when people see you, they're going to know there's refuge there. There's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity for me to move to the next level there. You represent a city. That's what you represent. And he says in the end of that text, let your light so shine that men may see your good works. And watch what he says. And do what? Glorify the Father. So the reason I know that I'm the light of the world is because when people come in contact with me, even though I may have done some amazing things for them, the work that I've done creates glory. And it creates glory for the Father. Essentially, you're glory carriers right now. And everything you do is getting ready to create glory. Your praise is going to change people's lives. Your shout is going to bring miracles. Your praise is going to break chains. How you live is going to shatter hell's walls. And what I want you to do for the next 20 seconds is I want you to give God the most radical praise you can give him for chain breaking, yoke destroying. Come on. 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 Ten more seconds. Come on. Come on. Five more seconds. Come on. We are almost there. Come on. Come on. If you pray the minute thing. If your praise is faithful, come on, come on, come on, come on. Five more seconds, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Glory to God. Look at somebody in the face and tell them I am. Y'all ain't saying like the men. Tell them I am. <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? Tell somebody I am the light of the world. Are you? Yeah. I believe the light of the world is in the building right now. I believe victory is in the building right now. I believe glory is in the building right now. So just high five three people and tell them you are the light. You are the light. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. The light of the world. We're getting ready to go. But there's two things we're going to do before we go. One of those things we're going to give to our pastor. But before we give to our pastor, here's what I want you to do. If you believe you got a responsibility to the world, lift your hands. So that was everybody in the room almost. So this is what you're going to do. Everybody that lifted their hands, I want you to put a serious praise on the life that you're getting ready to change. Listen to me. Hear me clearly. Because you need that praise to break the yoke before you have the conversation. Because what you're going up against is spiritual warfare. 
And so you're going to do something in the natural that's going to trigger something in the spirit. So when you get there, that breaking is already going to be done. We're going to praise God with our hands, with our feet, with our... We're going to give it all to him for 30 seconds. If you ain't going to praise him, tell your neighbor, don't get away from me because I'm trying to praise him. I got a responsibility to the world. When I count to three, I want you to give God the greatest dance, the greatest hop, the greatest leap that you can give him for 30 seconds. One, two, three, praise him!
you know you're the light. I don't care if you've been in darkness. I want you to tell your neighbor. Tell them when you leave here today. God told me to tell you. You don't have to turn nothing on. Because he already is. Shining from the inside. You can tell your haters. I got the light of the world. Living it, loving it, tired and shaming, loving it, carrying it, my sins all away. I'm letting you go. I feel the Holy Ghost. You are the light. Do you hear what I told you? You're the light. I don't care how dark it looks. Maybe you're there to light it up. Because you are the light of the world. If you're not saved and you're in here right now while the spirit is moving, no walking out, you don't know Jesus as your savior, this is the perfect time to become the light of the world. You're not saved and you want to be saved, just lift your hands, he'll save you right there where you are. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. Come on, there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You want to be saved, eleven. Saying, I want to be saved, I want to be saved. Twelve, saying, I want to give my life to Christ. Thirteen, I want to give my life to Christ. Fourteen, I want to give my life to Jesus. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, I want to give my life to Christ. 19, 20, I want to give my life to Christ. 21, I want to give my life to Jesus. 22, I want to give my life to Jesus. I just told you 22 people want to get saved. What you doing? Everybody lift their hands. Father, I believe that you sent your son to die for my sins. I believe the same power that brought him back from the dead is the same power that's working in me. Right now, I'm saved and hell can't do nothing about it. Come on, clap your hands for salvation. Do y'all know that's the greatest thing that can happen on a Sunday? Can you bless God for what just happened? You are the light of the world. If this is not your church home, you want to make this your church home. You don't go to the faith center, but you've been flirting with the faith center. You say, I want to make this my church. I love my bishop. I love how he teaches. I love community here. And this is not your church, and you want to make this your church. Lift your hands. We want you to join this church today. If you're in here, I see a hand up. I see a hand up. I see a hand up. 
If you got your hand up and you're not afraid, would you please come down here so we can receive you, please? We want to receive you. Become a part of this church. Join this church. I want those of you to just hold tight. We're going to walk out together. Come on. Come on. Come on. Make them feel good. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. Come on. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Everybody, play it. You are the light. You're still here. Come, 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 come. Make this your church home. This is the Faith Center. If you're here, if you're online, you can join, you can connect, but you're here. You're still sitting in your chair. Now you know you're not the only one. You got a few seconds to get up before we let you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're still here. Come. We're waiting on you. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. You are the light of the world. You are the light. There you go. Come on, good brother. You are the light. Of the world. Look at your church family. Come on, come on. You are the light of the world. All right. Church family, can we make our new brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews? Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on. Now, this young lady to my right, would you please follow her as she gives you all pertinent information on how to become a full-fledged member of the Faith Center. Right here to my right. Just keep right on coming. Come, come, come. Look at these brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews. Come on. You are the light. You are the light. I want y'all to make them feel good as they come out. Come on, come on, come on. The last thing we're going to do before we walk out the door and go celebrate. I didn't get to celebrate our bishop. Can I have my phone, please? And they had uh, some information. They had a cash app up there. I don't know. If you didn't get a chance to celebrate him, the least we can do is give a $360 seed. It's 360 days, 360 days in here. <laughs> I'm still the light of the world. Can't count, but I'm the light of the world. <laughs> so we want to bless God for our bishop and Pastor Carroll, okay? And if you didn't get to give to them last week, today is an opportunity. I'm going to give today. I'm going to start it off. I'm going to start this seat off with $1,000 to him today because that's how much he means to me. He means more to me than that. But I'm going to give $1,000. They're not telling you what to give. But what we want you to do is think about it. $1 a day is nothing. 
You can sow a $365 seed, that'd be great. Some of you, $365 is nothing. You can sow a thousand with me. Let's do that. You can sow $500. Let's do that. But if you can't do the $365, do your best. $25, $35, and then I want you to write that letter to him and her, telling them how much you appreciate them. Let them hear your story. But you can pull out your digital device and you can go to Cash App. And you can bless him right now on this machine. Is that what I, I sound old as I don't know what? On the machine. <laughs> Do we love our bishop? And we're not just saying that, right? We're showing it, right? So if you love him, I want you to get a seed in your hand. Now, for those of you that already gave, I know he's so excited. But here's what I want you to do. I would want you to give him a heave offering today. You know what that is? That's something over and above. It's just a heave. And I want you to get it, and I want you to bring it down to the altar and lay it down on the altar. And then we're going to leave, just like that. We're going to leave in the spirit of giving, and we're going to walk out and have fun with whatever we have out there in the lobby for you. But I want you to get something. You know why? Because he comes here every Sunday and preaches. Every single Sunday, whether he preaches or whether he sends somebody to preach, he's still doing it. I want you to get that seed, and I want you to bring it, and I want you to tap the altar with it, and I want you to bless God for what's going on. The praise team is going to sing something that's happy, not sad, and we're going to sing and you can get out of here. I've sold my thousand. I thank God for my bishop. I love you, Faith Center. And we'll see you next month.